Okay. So the choice is really up to you. You could be watching right now the um, the Maish 11 um, Hasidic uh, history channel um, or we can learn Hasidus. Or the Moshe Lavin pregame show. Moshe Lavin pregame show, or you can actually learn Hasidus. The difference is, is that this is just a study of history, you know, something that was said a long time ago, or we could actually uh, take it to heart and make, make a difference in our lives. And I mentioned it now before the mimer about to start, specifically because uh, this mimer, more than any other, uh, not the words right, more than any other, but uh, the phone. Um, no, no, I need any, and my, my computer's not working. Let's get start this computer. Uh, this is more than the other mimer. Uh, famous in other mimer, very famous mimer. Besides being more famous, uh, and I, let me first tell you how it got famous. This mimer was famous because this is the first mimer that Hasidim received. I'm going to turn off the sound first. Let's take the turn off all of them. This is the first mimer Hasidim got in Russia. Yeah, but not for the Zoom, just for the, I need to use the text of the mimer. <laughs> Let's see if you out how to turn this on. Uh, Hasidim in Russia didn't receive uh, Basilagani, as most of them didn't get it. Yeah, thank you. Um, just scroll up, right? So most of them did not receive the mimer Basilagani. The first mimer that they received was the mimer, this mimer that went on today, Lacey Meshachela. That's why this one became very famous. It's, it's a new, they, they, this is the first taste they got of the Rebbe. Not only was it the first taste that the in Russia got of the Rebbe, there's also many in, in Israel were also wondering who is this new Rebbe. And the, one of the um, more famous Hasidim in, in, in Russia, in, in Israel, was present at this mimer as well. And he was also very taken by the emotional outburst that Rebbe had throughout this mimer. Rebbe cried many times throughout this, throughout this mimer. The, um, the mimer was never edited, and the mimer discusses very fundamental concepts, and it's, it's, um, it, it leaves you with, with questions about, at least leaves me with questions about very fundamental things of this that are discussed here and not discussed anywhere else. Um, hold on a second. In uh, among Chabad Chassidus and Marim themselves, oh wow, how'd you do that? So what should I do? How do I? It's just it's regular. If I turn the zoom. Here down. Looks like there was a weird window update that got stuck. Ah, thank you. So. The, so it, that's how the Mimer became more famous. Became more famous because of this, um, because of this uh, uh, phenomena that it arrived and and how who was the present. But besides its fame, the content of the Mimer is unique and addresses something that throughout the Rebbe's letters you find this 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 issue um, very often. The Rebbe talks to Chassidim about all who are in all different stages of life. Uh, what they're still running institutions, cinema who are who are uh, private citizens, but they're 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 a lot more important to the world than they think they are. And there's a certain clipper that the Rebbe uses the word in Yiddish gemitlchkeit, which means complacency. Um, and this member addresses this complacency issue. Um, Rabbi Manus Friedman Zangesund, he he constantly. Uh, uh, teaches Siddhis from the angle of does God care about your mitzvahs? And uh, okay. Yeah, so Ramana's free to know. Let me turn this off. Sorry, guys, for this all technical difficulties today.
โอเคโอเคมาขายด้วยมาขายด้วยเลย this zoom without pretending um how about this just can you sign me as the host I just disconnected your audio Can't can just move the whole thing. Just keep it whatever. Yeah, did you just want to? Or you can be the host over here. Okay. You can. Can you make yourself the host here? Okay. So, um, sorry. So, the many letters of addresses this this clipa of people who feel that. Um, thank you. People who feel that uh, they've done enough and they're yetsa, and uh, they don't need to do more. So, in this moment, I've addressed this decision. I started to say, Rabbi Manus Freeman, he um, he constantly addresses. It look it looks like Chassidus from the, his fundamental point, uh, his cornerstone of how he presents Chassidus to me. Is does God care about your mitzvahs? And uh, he is drawing heavily from this discourse, where the Rebbe talks about how Hashem Himself cares about every mitzvah, and Rabbi Friedman is very outspoken about various Hasidic uh, Hasidic teachers who question whether Hashem cares about your mitzvahs and how they're missing the whole point of Hasidus. So whether or not uh, everyone agrees with his perspective, but. Definitely, there's something in this mimer which talks about that and addresses how the abister. It's, it's important to abister what we do. But again, it could be the history channel, or we could actually be learning this. Depends on if we take this mimer, we learn it, and we think it over, and we bring it to our lives, or we just, you know, just just uh, another mimer. But this is not another mimer. Again, this is the mimer of uh, of a veda of uh, getting on the wagon. The Rebbe Ashab once spoke about how uh, he has a wagon and Hasidim need to go up the wagon to be on his wagon. He discussed over there, there's four steps to his wagon, two steps to go out of the negative, two steps to go into the positive. But I think this mimer is, is definitely a mimer we could take to go on the Rebbe's wagon. It is more in the realm of the Musr part of Hasidus. It's not so much uh, the Hasidic part of Hasidus, more the Musr element of Hasidus, but it's not Musr, it's definitely Hasidus. There is a part of the mimer which is edited from the, by the Rebbe in a sicha. There's, a, there's an excerpt of this mimer that Rebbe um, used to, in a sicha to explain a, a sicha. With no further ado, let's leave the history channel and let's begin learning chassidus. Okay, the mimer is based upon a verse in the Torah portion where Hashem gives a blessing to Jewish people. Here's the blessing. <laughs> there shall not be any miscarriages or barren women in your land and I will fill your I will fill the number of your days meaning you'll have a full life this verse is a continuation of that which is written earlier in the Torah in this parsha verses before the Torah says you should serve the Lord your God and God will bless your bread and God will bless your water, and I will remove all sicknesses from your midst. The Torah says, and in that merit, God says, there will not be any miscarriages. by like serving God and uh, doing what God asks, and God will give you the blessing of that, not, not to have any miscarriages, not to have any, uh, not to be barren. The Torah here mentions a promise for three areas, for children, for health, and for Parnassah. There will be in these three areas a tremendous amount of blessing in an extraordinary way. God will bless your bread and your water. That's the blessing for sustenance. The Torah emphasizes God will bless your bread, God will bless your water, that means that not only will you have enough food to eat, but there will be additional blessing within that. Not just you'll have the bare minimum, God will give you more. Comfortable parnas. 
Torah continues regarding your health. I'll remove illness from within your midst. Not only will I remove illness, as misbury and mecha I will give you a full life. So we I will bless you with a long life. Not only will you not be sick, but you will uh, you'll live long. And also regarding the blessing of having children, the Torah says, you will not have miscarriages, you will, you will not be barren. There's two sides of this blessing. Number one is that you will have children. There won't be anyone who is barren. Number two, not only that they not be barren, but they will not be, um, the children will live. They will, they, will not have, they will not have miscarriages. That their children who are born will stay alive. Is not only a blessing that the child should not be in the category of a miscarriage. And today in uh, different, different, the different uh, medical terms used uh, I think what says what, what age of pregnancy the baby dies or the, it's a miscarriage. Here the Torah says, the use of the word miscarriage by Yaakov Avinu, the Torah says uh, that when Yaakov thought one of his children had died, and Yaakov's already an older man, he said, if I am going to be, be have to suffer through a miscarriage, the same word, it's not the medical term, he uses the same root of the word that we're using here, describing the death of one of his children. So we see that the word mishakelo doesn't only mean that a child shouldn't die in, in the womb, but also means a child shouldn't die uh, young, chas v'shal. It is a blessing for children who are born that they should, they should stay alive. And the Torah says about all these blessings, there shall not be. Those words can be explained in two ways. They can be translated as a commandment or as a promise. We should see the West Macham Kemis as we find in many places in the Torah. Hainu. See, we should see the Mishkel Vakara as Tornid Zanke Mishkel Vakara, Avtach Shati Mishkel Vakara, Bene Zen Zanke Mishkel Vakara. To either translate these words as you shall not have, it's, it's a forbidden for you to have a, a, a uh, miscarriage, it's forbidden to you to, to, to be barren. And another way of translating these words are a promise. You won't be barren, you won't have a miscarriage. Throughout the Torah, you could also translate every, every verse like that. The, the, the Torah says, you shall love Hashem your God. It also can be translated as, you will love Hashem your God. All commandments of the Torah are also promises because, as Rebbe said, because Hashem empowers us to do these mitzvahs, and the end is that we will fulfill all the mitzvahs of the Torah. And when a person does what is dependent upon him, that he should not be barren, then God promises him, promises him as well that he this blessing will be fulfilled in him as well. He has to do his part, then God promises that, that it will be fulfilled. Condition for all these blessings is the Torah says you should serve the Lord your God. Although the Gemara says that regarding these three blessings, that they do not depend, the blessings of health and sustenance and children, they do not depend on merit, rather they depend on mazel. So it seems that our, our merits don't have any weight over here because this has to, purely to do with the mazel and nothing to do with our efforts. However, the Gemara is only referring to the... Um, uh, bare minimum of receiving these things, but the the uh, abundance of these blessings depends on our merits. So Aveda, av, the service of Hashem, does impact <coughs> what <coughs> kind of uh, of of uh, parnasa and health and children will have. So so the Aveda is the key that Hashem asks us to do to receive these blessings. Tzarech Lahavin. I want to point out that um, I don't know if there, I'm not, I'm not of course, there's, there's, there's many, many volumes of Rebbe's letters, uh, over 33 volumes, 34 volumes right now. I'm still printing more letters of the Rebbe that have never been printed before. <clears throat> I don't know that the Rebbe uses 
the concepts in this mimer to, to um, tell people, do these things and you'll have children, do these things and you'll have parnasa. <clears throat> but um, they does say this in this mimer, it's, 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 it's perhaps not the uh, uh, general way to receive these blessings as a davar shavach on nafesh, which is equal for all souls. Uh, perhaps that's why there doesn't repeat this advice in, in various um, letters. Um, I don't know. That's just, that's just conjecture. I have no idea. Um, I'm only mentioning it because we're talking about very serious things and uh, things that we all care about, you know, and um, we're, we're not using this Maimon route now to, uh, as a, uh, as a, you know, to be Ishmat's liach, to be successful in life, and this is the mimer of success. It's not, it's not what this is about. It's not the mimer about success, no. This mimer is about, about uh, fulfilling your role in the world. That's the role. That's, that's, that's what we're going over here. We're not, we're not, we're not talking about uh, what you have to do to get these things. There are various uh, books that were a gathering of the Rebbe's letters, which talk about many, many things Rebbe says to do to receive various blessings. There is one thing um, in the Mimer uh, that Rebbe speaks about, which Rebbe does quote another letter about having true love and reverence for Hashem, which is considered a spiritual offspring, or offspring of your mind to, con- to give birth to feelings. It mentions that in the letter to someone who wants a blessing for children. But uh, the, what we're going over here is, is we're not trying to, to, to go towards, let's, let's at least try not to go towards the, uh, uh, what we're going to get out of the Mimer you know, on a gosh mystical level. Let's try to go to, let's kind of go close to the Rebbe. Let's go. It's our love to understand closer to ourselves, closer to where we want to get to, closer to what we're supposed to be doing in this world. But Tzara Flahav and Mao, we need to understand what is the meaning of Aveda. The literal translation of Aveda means service. What's the meaning of the word service? The Torah says, You shall serve the Lord your God. Seemingly, the whole concept of service is only relevant by a human master and a human servant. By a master, has various, a human master, has various needs, and it is the servant who is able to, to satisfy the needs of the master. Although he is his master, and he truly owns him, halachically, legally, he is the master, he is the servant. Still, he's missing some things. And that's the function of a, of a slave. Either to fulfill what the master is lacking or to fulfill what the master wants. By doing what the master wants or what the master needs, he complements the master. He, he makes the master complete. And that also adds perfection by the slave. The slave doing his job, there's a difference between a slave is not doing a job, his job, a slave which is doing his job, his, he is also uh, achieving something. He, he has achievement is in, in his master being satisfied with him, 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 him contributing something to his master. The, the slave that we're discussing over here is the slave that discuss, that Abra Shah discusses in other memorim in Tafresh Machvav, the memorim of Miknerav, and uh, the, the series of memorim about Evid Pasha and Evid Nemon, a kind of slave who cares about his master and wants his master's success. So by this master being being um, being happy and me master be, me being uh, having what he needs, the servant feels happy about that as well because he loves his master. The pleasure of the master is a pleasure of the servant. That's just an aside. We're not, by a human slave, a human master, there's certain something, there are certainly things that the slave contributes to the master the master doesn't have. Avo l'mayla, but by Hashem, ki since God is perfection of everything, it doesn't make sense. How can we say that there's something that we do that's called service for Hashem, that gives him something, that we're serving him? We are, he, he's missing something and we're giving him something. He's perfect. We all need to understand we find in our sages uh, various statements that seem to contradict each other about what we do towards Hashem. Does it give Hashem something or not? 
Sometimes our sages say that what we do has no effect on heaven, on, 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 on Hashem. He is a medish, as a medish says, does a God care whether you slaughter an animal from its back or from its neck? Why would he care? Rather, the purpose of the mitzvah is to purify us. It's not that God needs the mitzvahs. Rather, the goal of mitzvahs is to give us something to purify us. That's the reason why if the shech, the animal, from the neck and not from the back, it's not for his sake. Why would he care? Rather, it's something that's for your sake, for you to be purified. I know, that means the whole purpose of mitzvahs is merely to purify us. However, this is not something that affects Hashem. As it says clearly in the Torah, if you were, if you have sinned, the Torah says clearly, what did you do to him? With your great abundance of transgressions, what did you do to him? If you were at tzaddik, what did you give to him? Does he really need you? Sounds like he doesn't need you at all. That's what this verse and the previous passage that we quoted from our sages seems to indicate that God doesn't care what side of the animal you should slaughter it from. It's only for your sake. If you sin against him, you haven't really hurt him. If you've been at Tzadik, you haven't given anything to him. That's what it, that's the sentiment that is that is expressed by those verses and those uh, passages. But sometimes we find in the words of our sages that our efforts do have an impact in heaven. It says in the, in the Medrash, uh, about the um, Miraglim, about the spies that went to Israel and came back with the report that we're not able to conquer Israel. And um, there's an exchange over there in the Medrash discussing, um, uh, over there in Pasha Shlach, but the Medrash discusses an, it's an exchange between Hashem and Moshe Rabbeinu. Um, that Hashem says to Moshe Rabbeinu, you should have helped me. How should Moshe help Hashem? You should have told me you should be successful in your work. So therefore, Moshe Rabbein responds to Hashem's request for a blessing. And now, Hashem, may your strength be greater. What does Medish mean? But it says clearly the Medish, we'll see that Hashem, so to speak, needs Moshe Rabbeinu's uh, blessing, so to speak. By fulfilling the term, it's it, so to speak, expands and greatens God's name, Adnai. The Koyach Adnai, the power of Alf, Dal, Nun, Yud, the power of Hashem's name, is expanded and strengthened by our efforts. It says specifically by saying, Yeshme Rabba, with all our might, that so to speak, it gives something to the shame, the name of Hashem Yud, Alf, Dal, Nun, Yud. We do have an impact. There is also an expression of our sages which says, that when we don't do what Hashem asks us to do, because Hashem, so to speak, to be weakened. The Pasuk says, the rock that bore you has been crushed. So it says in them, what, what does that mean? That when the Jewish people do not fulfill the will of Hashem, I know, so to speak, uh, crush, God's power, so to speak, the power of God's greatness. So here, clearly, the Torah says that we cause, so to speak, a weakening in the Abishter and Hashem's strength by our lack of performance or our lack of physical performance of Torah mitzvahs. And uh, another quote of our sages says, no, we're the guys we're, we, we, who do have no effect at all in heaven. We're the guys who just has this thing that Hashem gave us for our sake and nothing to do with him. So which one is it? Is it for our sake that we do to him, or is it for his sake? Is he impacted or is he not impacted? And this is a question that addresses what the meaning of Aved is. Hashem says, you should serve me. Serve me what? What do you need, Hashem? Does he need anything? It would seem he doesn't need anything because he's Hashem, he's perfect. But these teachings of our sages indicate that he does need them. There is another um, Talmud, Talmudic passage that does not quote here, a famous passage about Rabbi Shmuel, Queen Godel, that he said that he once went into um, the Holy of Holies and Hashem asked him to bless him. Uh, and Hashem said to him, 
my son Yishmuel, please bless me. And there's a famous song of Avram Freedom that on those words, and uh, Yishmuel can go those, gives Hashem the blessing that we give Hashem the blessing every day in our prayers. Points anyone who remembers where this blessing, where we give Hashem this blessing. We ask Hashem, may your mercy overwhelm your wrath. May you be more merciful than wrathful. Your mercy should be stronger than your anger. No anyone know where we say this to God? Survey says. Shana Rabba. Shana Rabba. No way. Yes, no way. You know what I do with that? That's one I almost never use. <laughs> I don't believe that. Anyways, so uh, so it could be that that passage isn't so relevant here because that's never says that's where the Hashem is saying, talking to one individual who's the greatest tzaddik, you know, whose prayers were so amazing. That's not so relevant, but. The quote earlier about Moshe Rabbeinu, talking about Moshe Rabbeinu, but the Gemara puts this in the context of how are Yehoshua Rabbah does things. So, um, so we're left here with a question: Do, Does our terminus impact Hashem or doesn't impact Hashem? So let's go further. Achrei no explanation is, is as follows. Oh, we, it's already it's already late. Let's let's uh, call it a day for today. Uh, so let's recap. The the pasuk says many great blessings here in the Torah. And the blessings come because we serve Hashem. And our question is, what does it mean? What does it mean of service of Hashem? It seems that our service does affect Hashem in some ways, doesn't affect Hashem in other ways. And we need to understand exactly what, how Hashem cares about a term mitzvah, what is the meaning of Hashem's, Hashem's interest and how he's affected by a term mitzvah. And that's why the Torah says that we can serve Hashem and we can give something, so to speak, to Hashem. Any questions before we start for today? Okay, great day, Yonison, great day, Beryl, great day, David, great day, Yonatan, great day, Dr. Bressman, and great day, Menachem Mendel. Hi,